Okay, welcome back. So we left it on a bit of a cliffhanger. We guess we're being eaten by shrunken heads. So chapter 17, just in the nick of time. Hope seemed to be running out faster than you could scream. Please don't eat me. In only a few minutes, the three gruesome heads had gleefully gobbled down half our guests and were showing no signs of stopping. Ah! Gladys Potts was seized off the top of the dung beetle muffins. No! Madame McCready was sniffed up Aunt Influenza's nose as she flew frantically past. Gah! Ulf was licked up right off the tablecloth and vanished down the pirate head's slimy throat before he even realised it was behind him. This is it, I thought, as I stared with wide eyes. Maudlin Maloney is winning. The Nomad and its magpie were right, and this is the end of the Nothing to See Here Hotel. Aunt Influenza's head had been busily slurping back the family of Bogrants, who had swam out of the centre of the pork and parsley punch bowl for safety. Then the gory lump swivelled its eyes upward and spotted us all huddled at the top of the still wobbling crab curd cofters. I cro a crooked leer spread across its withered face and it started to bounce towards us. Dunk. Dunk. Boom. A second, much louder noise suddenly echoed around the cavernous dining room. Even the, the three heads stopped hopping about and seemed to listen for a moment, despite their ears, be ears being stuffed full of old rags and sawdust. Boom. 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 My heart sank in despair. What was Maloney sending us now? Boom, boom, boom. Suddenly the dining room door um, opened and the giant figure of Nancy stepped inside, brandishing a skyscraper-sized bottle of mango chutney. Found it, my wee beauty, she thundered joy joyfully. Sorry it took so long, I I'd left it on the... <gasps> Nancy's mouth dropped open as she stared down at the nearly empty table and the three shriveled heads staring back at her. If it was possible for shrunken heads to look sheepish, this was the moment. I swear they started twiddling their thumbs if they'd had any. Nancy turned her attention to the head with the ring through its nose and gasped when she saw the pine dryad's feet, or roots, sticking out of its crusty mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He called from somewhere inside the ghastly thing. Help me! That was it. Oh, blunkers, Nancy roared, darting forward and snatching up the jade knife and fork from the counter and the table. There was a tremendous flash of light and a loud whooshing sound as Nancy snapped the magical cutlery in half. Ah! Every single guest who had been celebrating was suddenly unshrunk. The three monstrous heads exploded into nothing but clouds of dust and papery flakes of dead skin as the unfortunate magical creatures, packing their go gobblesome gullets, returned to full size. Arms and legs flailed in all directions as the table collapsed under our weight. The room instantly filled up with all the guests spilling out into the hallway like a living, breathing avalanche. Got a picture of Nancy saving the day here. Mm, so at least they're all okay. That takes us to the end of that chapter.